In this video, we are going to look at seven slicer tips. Now, some of these tips will be more basic and it will be about changing options to get more from your slicers in Excel. And some of them are a little more advanced and will be using formulas. So without any further ado, let's get going. For this first example, let's look at how we can show icons or emojis as the options in our slicer. Now this example maybe doesn't look so bad when there's only three options, but using text can take up a lot of space and make your buttons and therefore your slicer very large. Looking at the table being used as the source for this pivot table, I have another column named category icon and I'm going to change the slicer to use those values instead of the category name. Those icons have been inserted by simply using my Windows keyboard and using an emoji. The Windows and period icon and then searching for what you want such as that Berg icon on screen. But now that I have those icons in a column, I can remove the current slicer and from my pivot table, pivot table analyze and insert slicer, and I can use my category icon, and you can see that your slicers can quite happily handle these icons. If I widen column A, I can happily slip that down the side of that column and then possibly change its style to how it was before with a darker style. And now this is taking up a lot less room than that previous option and I can click around and it works just as before. So emojis to spice up your slices. For the second tip, you might be wondering how to get your slicer from that vertical layout to the horizontal. And the way you do this is with your slicer selected, up on the slicer tab, there is an option for columns. And I know there are three options for this slicer. So if I change the columns to three, that would force it onto a single row. And now I've got this nice horizontal slicer. I can reduce the width of column A again, instead of the vertical one. And this will work quite nicely now, as I can have it as the same width as the pivot table itself. It's a very nice alternative, especially when you don't have many options in your slicers. Tip number three is connecting your slicers to be used with normal worksheet formulas. And slicers do not have to be used with pivot tables only. Now in this example, I have a slicer like before, but you can see that I've got a formula for the values in column C to E. We've got a group by function here and it's providing the sum and the count. Now I want my slicer to work off the formula. At the moment it is not. Me clicking these slicer options is doing nothing. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, just note that I've got a filter applied for beverages because over here on the table being used by those formulas, you can see that the slicer is operating on this table and at the moment I can only see beverages. So the slicer is working off the table, it's just how do I get the formulas working with that? Now in column M, you can see that I've created a column called filter and looking at the formula in there, there is an aggregate function and if we investigate this aggregate function, what it's doing is it is performing a count on the order ID column, a numeric column, and we're using option five. And what that means is it's going to ignore filtered items. And then we've got the at symbol before order ID indicating it's counting the occurrences of that value, that single value, not all of the order IDs, just that order ID. So we can see in the filter column we have a bunch of ones because these IDs are being counted, they're being found, 
in the filter table. The ones we cannot see have got a zero because they have not been counted and we can't see them because they've been filtered out. But what would help prove my point here is if I select column M and we look to the bottom of our screen, you can see the count and the sum are the same. Okay, they're not exactly the same because count is counting the header, but if you take that away, they're the same. And that's proving that the rows we cannot see must contain a zero. Now with that information, that means we just need to add a filter to filter for the value of one in the filter column. And we can easily do this with functions like sum ifs, count ifs, filter, and right now, group by. So if I come into my group by function and I'm looking for the filter argument, which is this one here, and for the filter array, I can just check if my TBL sales and filter column, which is right at the bottom, is equal to the value of one. And if it is, that's the only time I want it to be used. So now when I use my slicer, it is working with my group by formula directly, and I can get formula driven reports and not only use slicers with pivot tables. Tip number four is about how we can display the selected values from a slicer. And this could be to be used in a label in a chart or maybe some other kind of calculation. You want to know which options the user clicked, especially in a more complex dashboard where it may not always even be clear what's being applied by different slicers. In this more simple example, I can see that my chart title says sales of beverages because that's the selected item. And if I hold control and click on food, it now says sales for beverages food. And indeed, if I clear my slicer, it will mention all of them, sales for beverages, cake and food. Clicking cake, you know what's gonna happen. So how is it doing this? Well, if I move my charts out of the way for a moment, I have a formula cell just behind it. And if we look at this formula, we can see it has the text sales for, and then we've got this combination of multiple functions here. Primarily, we've got text join concatenating or joining the values delimited by a comma. But then once again, following on the previous tip, we've got a filter function here that's working off that filter column being equal to one. So the filter column is finding which values have been selected, which ones are visible, unique, will then remove the duplicates, sort, then sorts them in A to Z order before text join joins them together. These formulas don't need to be scary. When you break them up, they're not as bad as they seem. And that's all it takes. I then linked my chart to that cell. As I click on my title, you can see the reference to cell C7 there. And as easy as that, I'm able to display the item selected as they are clicked and we could have done that and used those values in other creative ways too. Tip number five is about working with dependent slicers. So right now I've got two slicers, one for product category, one for product name. So unsurprisingly, there's a dependency there. And if I click on one of my categories like food, that will filter not just the chart, but also my other slicer. So the food items are brought to the top. They keep that dark blue color, whereas other items with no data are shown below. The same attitude when I click on cake, you can see the cake values prioritized, which is correct, and the other values below. But maybe I'd rather not see the other values. Why are they here at all if there's no data? To do this, I can right mouse click on the slicer and I'll go to slicer settings. Once in slicer settings, you can see the checkbox to hide items with no data as opposed to visually indicating that they have no data. So if I check that box and click OK, and now as I click on my items, I'm only presented with the values with data 
and the others are hidden. Slicer tip number six, and we are back at our pivot table slicers. For this example, I have a pivot table and a pivot chart showing different information about my data. And I've got a slicer from earlier, which when I click on the items is changing both. You see both the table and the chart react. So how is this working? Well, if I go up to my slicer tab on the ribbon and across to a button called Report Connections. Inside Report Connections, I can see the pivot tables that that slicer is connected to. One of them is called Pivot Table 3, because I seem to have forgotten to name that one. And the other one is called Store PT. So not so important when you've got two pivot tables, but if I had more than that, naming them is a good idea. You can also see they're working off different sheets. So although it states that you can select the pivot table and pivot chart reports to connect to the filter, technically you're just connecting pivot tables. You can't connect it directly to a pivot chart. But maybe I'm being a little bit too petty with terms there. You know what they mean. And if I was to uncheck the box for the store PT, just for demonstration purposes, and click OK, now when I choose the category options, you can see the chart is changing, as that's working off the pivot table on the other sheet. But my pivot table below is unfazed by these selections. To get it working again, back to report connections, check in the box for store PT, and now we are back in business. Connecting your slicer to multiple pivot tables really was the groundbreaking update when slicers came out in 2010. They brought a few advantages, but that was probably advantage number one, that finally we could filter multiple sheets, multiple reports from a single filter. And we can do exactly the same with slicers working with formulas. It's just a case of utilizing the criteria we spoke about earlier in this video. For the final slicer tip, and I'm actually going to show two here, so a bonus tip as well, is first of all the order of the items in the slicer. You can see in this pivot table that my slicer items are beginners, intermediate, advanced. So that is going against the A to Z order we would expect from text. And the other tip is stopping the move and resize. So for example, if I click on advanced and then follow with intermediate and beginners, you can see as I switch between intermediate and beginners that that slicer is moving. And it's moving because the width of column A is moving. So we can stop this by either stopping the pivot table resize, which is probably what I would do, and or stopping the slicer from moving. So let's focus on the slicer, because that's the tutorial. If I click on my slicer, in fact, let's right click, and I'll go for size and properties. And then over on the right hand side, if I expand the properties area, you can see that by default, the slicer is set to move, but don't be resized. And that's good. You may have come across this kind of thing with charts or tables before, like this table right now is resizing with the value. Now I'm going to choose don't move or size. So now when I choose between my options, it is unaffected. I can do the same for the pivot table. So I've chosen intermediate here as it does have the biggest width of a course name. And with the pivot table, if I go into the pivot table options by right clicking, there's an option that auto fits the column widths on update and I can disable that. So I didn't necessarily need to do both because it, in this example, and I stress this example, it was only the pivot table affecting the slicer. But knowing where that option is in both is very useful. And now when I choose other items, you can see that that column is not changing width anymore. Now, as for the items in the slicer, it's all about custom lists. 
So I have created a custom list for those course levels. You can see that by going into File, down to Options, into Advanced, and scrolling all the way to the bottom to Edit Custom Lists. And you can create your own sort orders in here, and you can see the one in question with Beginners, Intermediate, Advanced there, which has been set up. Then it's just making sure that in your slicer, if I go into the slicer settings, that checkbox to use custom lists is enabled. And I believe that's enabled by default. So just having the custom list will be enough. But if not, just check that box and you're good to go. And I do not have the order of advanced beginners intermediate. I have the order of beginners intermediate advanced because of that custom list. And they are seven plus one slicer tips. I hope you enjoyed them. What was your favorite tip? Let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe so that you are notified about the latest videos at this channel. Take care, I'll see you again soon.